Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So today's gospel, as Saint John Chrysostom was um, contemplating on the gospel, he noticed one virtue, which was the virtue of long suffering. He noticed that Saint Mary, she really was strong in this virtue of long suffering. But a few other characters in this gospel as well, Saint Joseph. Um, and also the three wise men. Ev from the moment that St. Mary was greeted by the angel Gabriel and given this news that she will bear the Christ, her life was difficult. St. Joseph had a plan in his mind about how he may put her away secretly lest she be a reproach among the people. She is forced to travel for a long distance, heavily pregnant, uncomfortable. She is forced to give birth in a manger. There's no room. Flee to Egypt. Come back. Don't come back here. Go there. It's problem after problem after problem. And so she's really strong in this virtue of long-suffering. St. Joseph also with her. The wise men as well. They go and they travel a long distance to meet the Lord. And on their way back, they go another way, living a life of fugitives. Herod the king, he was mad. He killed all of these infants. He told these wise men, make sure that you come and tell me where this king is. You can only imagine what his reaction would have been when he realized that the wise men hadn't listened to him and had gone back another way and had avoided him. They must have, must have lived a life of fugitives. So a number of the characters in the gospel today have this virtue of long-suffering. And it's a good opportunity for us, just for a few minutes, to think about how we can also acquire this virtue. Um, and then Abun Jonathan will continue. So first, before we talk about how to acquire the virtue of long-suffering, it's important to talk about what long-suffering is not. And long-suffering is not just suffering for a long time. That is a part of it, but it's not just that. Because I can suffer for a long time full of bitterness, full of anger, with no faith in God, with no love for God or for anybody. I'm just a victim of my circumstances. That's not a virtue. What is this long-suffering that the Lord wants from us? But it's to bear patiently, like St. Mary. We never once heard her complain. We never once heard her ask, where are you, God? We never once heard her ask, why me? She suffered for a long time gracefully and patiently and faithfully. So when we have some suffering in our life for a long time, it's a chance to develop this virtue, a chance to be like our mother, St. Mary. Of course, long-suffering is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, which we all know very well. And then the very next one, number four, is long-suffering. So it's not a virtue that we can acquire by ourselves. You can't acquire long-suffering by reading books, by making a decision, by thinking about it alone. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. St. Mary was full of the Holy Spirit. And she shone with this virtue of long-suffering. For us... We receive the Holy Spirit in the sacraments, baptism and chrismation. And we can remain and continue to be full of the Holy Spirit if we live a life of the sacraments in the church. A life of confession regularly, of Holy Communion regularly. We can be filled with the Spirit. The second thing is also from St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love 
suffers long and is kind, does not envy, does not parade itself, is not puffed up. How can I have this virtue or practice, this virtue of long suffering? Love suffers long. I cannot practice the virtue of long suffering without love. And I think there's no better lesson for this than having children. If there are children here, your parents love you so much. But they've also suffered for a long time. They love us so much. And it's only because we love our children so much that we are able to correct them a thousand times, give them the same instruction many times. It's only because we love them so much. Imagine we have this degree of love for everybody that we encounter. Imagine if I love my teacher like that, if I love my colleagues like that, if I love my neighbor, if I love every person that I encounter, and I say to them, you've wronged me, you're frustrating me, you're not meeting my expectation, but love suffers long. So if we want to have this virtue of long suffering, we must be full of the Holy Spirit and we must love. And finally, we must look towards eternity. One of my favorite verses is Romans 8, 18, where St. Paul writes, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. One of the most important ways that we can have this virtue of long suffering is looking towards eternity. Because if I have some difficulty in my life, and I'm only looking at that difficulty with the eyes of the world and with the short term vision, then it becomes impossible. But if I look at any problem, even an insurmountable problem, a problem that can only be solved with a divine solution, there is no solution to this problem from human wisdom. I can still bear that suffering gracefully and patiently if I'm looking towards heaven. I may have shared with you this story before of one of my patients who, who really taught me this lesson. So he's a young guy and he was a fireman. So extremely fit, extremely fit. Up and down stairs, ladders, the, the pole, extremely fit. And then he was diagnosed with a terrible condition called MS which is different for everybody, but for his experience was particularly bad. It affects the nerves in his body, and he was unable to walk, unable to go to the bathroom, ended up in a wheelchair. And actually, after a while, he didn't even have enough power to operate the wheelchair, so he was in this thing called a power chair, which is just like a little joystick. He, that's, all he, that's all he could do. He couldn't even operate a wheelchair. And every time he walks in, how are you? Oh, I'm great. You don't look great. You were great a year or two ago. You're not great now. I'm great. Until one, once I, I just I had enough of him and I said, listen, I need to, you to explain to me how you're so happy and how you're so great and what's going on with you. I know that he's you know, a really devout Christian. I know that. And he smiled and he said, because I'm going to walk again. And that was his answer. That was his simple answer. Because I'm going to walk again. I said, Tim, what do you mean? Said, Haven't you read the Bible? I said, oh, yeah, I have. Once or twice. And he said, well, in heaven there is no disease. There is no sadness. There is no nothing. So when I go to heaven, like this body of mine now that's letting me down, I'm going to walk again. And that's how I'm fine. Many people with, with diseases suffer. But not many people 
are long suffering. Suffering for a long time, but patiently and gracefully and faithfully looking towards that eternity. So even if you or I have a problem which cannot be solved, which is painful, don't look just at the 60, 70, 100 years that we have on this earth. Look towards eternity. Look towards that restoration that the Lord will give us. Look, look towards the joy of heaven. And then we remember that the sufferings of this world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, as we read in Romans 8. So let's pray that we are like St. Mary and the wise men and St. Joseph and have this virtue of long-suffering by being full of the Holy Spirit, full of love, and always looking towards eternity. And I'll ask Abuna to continue. Thank you, Abuna Elijah. Actually, I haven't prepared anything, but out of obedience, Abuna asked me to share something, and uh, I will follow the church uh, celebrating St. Joseph, because this time of the year, the first Sunday after Christmas, the church arranged the reading around St. Joseph the Carpenter. The church, Coptic church, loves St. Joseph very much. So every year, the first Sunday after Christmas, we have to read this. Matthew chapter 2, which is the virtues of St. Joseph. One of them is what Abuna Elijah taught us today, the long suffering, because he has that virtue. But this is not the only virtue that St. Joseph the carpenter has. He has many virtues. So as Abuna said, uh, we should have virtues in our life. To be Christian, we should have virtues. Maybe one virtue only, or maybe two. Or maybe like St. Mary, have a look at here and say, you are full of virtues. And St. Joseph as well, not less than St. Mary, he is full of virtues. I'm going to, in the next few minutes, get through the virtues of St. Joseph, as I love very much at this time of the year to talk about St. Joseph every year. Maybe the only time in the year we talk and remember St. Joseph and take him as an intercessor uh, in our prayer, in our life. Many, many virtues St. Joseph has. Story of St. Joseph is revealing us his virtues. The first virtue, he was a righteous man. The church at that time chose him as one of the righteous men to entrust him to look after this pure lady, a pure young girl, St. Mary, whom they love very much and whom they like very much, someone righteous to look after her. A second virtue is uh, obedience. He has this virtue that when they told him, take this girl 13 years of age, and look after her, and a man in his age does not have any desires to have a wife or to have a girl in his life out of obedience. He say, I will look after her as a grandfather, even not a father, out of obedience. So he was obedient to the church and all the teaching of the church. A third virtue is his purity, because he did live with St. Mary in purity. So when the angel came to him, uh, came to St. Mary to tell her, you are going to be pregnant, she knows that her master, the man who is taking her to his home and looking after her, is a very pure man. He will never think of her as a wife, although he can. Although at that time, someone very old can take a wife, like the story of St. David, David the king. He took a wife in a very old age to look after him and to give him warmth. So they, the people can take a wife, and she is his wife. He can take her as a wife, lovely young lady, but he was a man of purity. His eye and his mind was full of pure purity. That's why St. Mary said, no way. This man is so, so pure. He, I'm living with him as a granddaughter to him, and he is very pure. He never looked at me as a wife and dealt with me as a wife. The St. Joseph, the carpenter, was a man of purity. He was full of purity. And also he has the virtue of faith, that he has a lot of faith. Imagine with me that angels appeared to St. Joseph and told him, don't do something wrong with St. Mary because she is pregnant with the Holy Spirit. First time in humanity that people hear about uh, a Holy Spirit that can a lady be conceived from a Holy Spirit. But he believed. And the, the faith he has is a very strong faith. And I, I would like very much to speak to you about that faith. That... After a week, maybe the thought comes into his mind, 
am I foolish? Should I still believe in that? The wife has a baby in her tummy, and uh, the, the tummy is growing, and she is uh, going to give birth. And then he has faith after birth that what is, what is born from St. Mary is from the Holy Spirit, and he is the Son of God. And he went with St. Mary in pregnancy, and he went with Jesus for 12 years, believing, all the time, believing. And I'm quite sure that Satan never left him. Always come and whisper in his ears. Do you still believe this nonsense? Do you still believe that she is pregnant and this baby is from the Holy Spirit? Who told you that this baby is not from another man? Who told you that? But the man was out very, very strong in his faith, and that's St. Joseph. Long suffering, as Abuna explained. Uh, fatherhood, that Jesus look at him as a father because he has this virtue of fatherhood looking after him very much as a father. So when St. Mary tried to convince Jesus when he was 12 years of age, come back with us and Jesus would like to stay in the altar teaching because this is a place he should be. And she told him a lovely word. He, she told him, your father and I, please, for the sake of your father, come back with us. And as if the, the, the value uh, of his father, St. Joseph, uh, has a big influence and impact on him. And St. Mary used that. Your father is in a lot of pain because you are not with us. Please come. And because of this word, Jesus came back with St. Mary to look after his father. So he was a father. And uh, Jesus enjoyed his fatherhood, uh, if I can say that as a human being, and as a little boy, 12 years of age, he enjoys the fatherhood of St. Joseph the carpenter. And the last thing, he's great intercessor because many, many miracles, people who believe in St. Joseph and ask his intercessor, he never make them go back empty-handed, but always answers their prayers. I don't want to take more time, but a lot of miracles, maybe in another occasion, I'll tell you a number of miracles that happen here in our church because people love St. Joseph and they ask him in their prayer to intercede in their behalf. May the prayers and the blessing of St. Joseph the carpenter be with his church, be with us, and may his prayers in heaven support us here on earth. Glory be to God forever. Amen.